What's up everybody? Okay, in this live stream, you can see what I've got here. I have macOS Monterey installed on a Parallels virtual machine here. Now there's a couple of things you can do with this, but uh, most of the stuff I want to set up here, I can. What you cannot do here is customize currently in the Parallels desktop software, Parallels for Mac. You cannot customize the environment settings for this particular VM for Mac OS 12. So at the moment, you're kind of stuck with what you get. And that's why I also have a very low screen resolution. You can't set memory, CPU, and all those things at the moment. But what you can do is run everything that you need to, with one exception. What I found is, because you cannot specify the size of the VM currently, in Parallels for Mac, you just kind of get this default here. There's a limited amount of space. It's not enough for space to install Xcode. For what I want here, that's fine, because what I actually want to do is kind of a bit of a practice run here. I'm setting this VM up. It's a fresh install of Mac OS 12 Monterey. And what I've got is I've already installed, um, you know, brew here, as you can see, that's all I've done. And I want to use this primarily for setting up all my other tools for things like React, React Native, you know, all those web kind of tools. So I really don't need Xcode for that. So I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. We're gonna find out as we go along here together. But hopefully, if this works out all right, I should be able to install all my, my normal sort of tools. We're gonna to go through this here. I have an install script I normally use, but I'm gonna do it manually here and install um, a lot of my tools via Brew and, and all of those kind of things. So we're gonna sit here and do this together today just for a bit of fun. All right, let's have a look at my tools here. So like I said, at the moment, I've only got Brew installed. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start working through some of the others. Um, so I normally install Git. So I'm gonna do Git, I'm gonna do NPM. Uh, let's have a look here. Picking off a few of the more obvious ones. Vim is another one that I use. Um, it's gonna start by doing these. Oh, actually, wait, I don't think I've restarted the terminal since I did that. So let's try that again. Let's go to here to the terminal. Should now work. Well, I installed brew. Hold on, let's try that again. Let's bring up Safari. I'm gonna go to brew.sh. Now I know I installed it because it installed the Xcode tools. So let's try that again. Let's see what happens here. Copy that. Let's get rid of Safari. Let's make this font a little bigger for everybody here. Let's see if it'll do it again. Don't know what happened there. Maybe it bombed because I hadn't installed the uh, Xcode command line tools, which it did do last time. So let's see. Okay, so I know I didn't do these. We're gonna go ahead and put these in here. Hey, Coco type. Yeah, I'm on early today. I uh, <laughs> don't know how it's going to go later today. So I was like, I'm going to get on this on early today. And I was in the mood for doing the streaming, get this set up. And also because if this doesn't work, I need to come up with a plan B later today. So how you doing, buddy? And also, I'm also on early because just in case that you stream later on, uh, I thought I want to catch that as well. So Okay, there we go. So Brew's gonna work now, great. All right, let's clear this out. Let's go back here, install these tools. What you been up to, Coco type?
so many blobs. And I, I have macOS Monterey on my main machine now. Happy to report I have not had any issues yet. Fingers crossed. Uh, you do have your annual Halloween stream planned, but feeling a bit under the weather, so may postpone to tomorrow. Oh, get well soon, buddy. You gotta gotta do your Halloween stream. So yeah, maybe maybe wait till tomorrow. I'll uh, look forward to catching that. Hope you get better. It has been very uh, the weather's been very windy and very weird here in Texas this week. So my uh, allergies have been driving me nuts. I've had uh, air conditioning in the day, heating at night. That's always great for someone like me. And uh, update on my, uh, for you all, apparently my laptop is due to arrive next week. So fingers crossed on that as well. This That's also part of the reason for this. So um, I'm sure everybody goes through this, right? You get the new machine, you're like, oh, I'm going to keep this machine nice and clean and not get all this crap on there. Well, we'll see. So this is a bit of a, practice run here this week as well to see what tools do I really need as I transition from my Mac mini M1 to my laptop and figure out what tools you know what don't need to install that stuff and I'm playing around a bit with docker as well to try and figure out what other you know stuff I don't need to install on my main machine and I could just have it nicely packaged up in a docker file and keep keep everything nice and clean it's always kind of fun I uh, you know of feel like sometimes i should have just been uh i don't know some kind of infrastructure engineer or something like that all kinds of rain due to the, the so-called bomb cyclone yeah i know it's a great name isn't it uh and then the sun the last few days which is definitely odd for seattle in october yeah yeah, you guys have, have it a bit weird out there. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that, the bomb cyclone. I was like, well, that doesn't sound good. It's never They never make it sound like a happy thing, do they? You know, like, oh, the cotton candy cyclone. Yeah. Well, hang in there. It's not until you do a fresh install like this and you go through some of these tools, you realize just how much third-party crap gets installed on your machine. Oh, I got a new follow here. So thank you to, I'm going to do my best to try and pronounce this, but I don't think I'm going to pull this one off. Uh, thank you, Dimitri Maximov Galahad. Appreciate that. How you doing? <clears throat> Appreciate the follow. All right. So we got that installed. So we've got Git. We've got all the, let's see, what did we do here? We did Git. We did NPM and Vim. All right, Git, kind of an important one, right? Let's see, right, what am I going to do next here? I'm just looking down my list. I have a bunch of casks. I am looking for the ones that I need to install. Uh, let's do brew, tap homebrew, slash cask, in case I need that. My my, I need to update my script. My install script is a little bit out of date, but I'm copying this stuff across manually here so you can all see it. If we just did it automatically, there'd be no fun in that, right? Boy, I have a lot of third-party apps in that I installed. I know I don't need all of these. We've got some big red going on today. It's kind of a, like a nice ready blood color, right? It's a lot cheaper than blood. Uh, isn't Git installed with the Xcode CLI tools these days? It probably is. You're probably right. Like I say, I'm, my uh, script is a little out of date here, but I, I believe it is, yeah. Now, the question would be, though, does Xcode keep it up to date? That I bet it doesn't, right? which is why I do, uh, like last time when I did it via brew, I know I see regular update, when I do my brew update, I get updated versions of Git, and those are the ones that are used. 
I don't know if Xcode keeps the version of Git up to date. Probably not, right? Same with Ruby. Why is it that the Mac version of Ruby is always way out of date? Or at least the one that it ships with, right? I, I've seen other people getting their uh, their new machines and everything. A little bit jealous at this point, got to admit. I'm curious. Yeah, probably not, right? Probably not up to date. I'm curious um, if any of you have got the new any of the new machines yet because I'm wondering how big and why they did that inscription. I don't know if you, any of you have seen this, but on the underside of the new MacBook Pros, they've actually sort of laser etched in their MacBook Pro. I don't know why they did that. It's a bit weird. So if anyone's got one and they, can, they know how big it is, let me know. Because, you know, i got to wait till Thursday. Thursday's a long way off, folks. Coco Type, I can't remember. Did you... I think you were not going to order a machine, right? Anybody else? If anybody else ordered one of the new laptops, let me know. I, I'm still not regretting choosing the 14-inch. I've seen a lot of debate, more than I recall in recent years, with folks saying about whether they get the 16-inch screen or the 14-inch screen. For me when I don't know about the rest of you, but certainly most people I know, they plug in external screens when they're at home. So, you know, 14 inch for portability, 16 inch screen on the move is nice, but I can live with the 14. The rest of the time, they're all gonna be closed up and put at the back of my desk in clamshell mode. So whether it's a 14 inch screen or 16 inch screen doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, got my hot new Apple product coming to you. You got the iPhone 13 mini. Oh, you'll have to share that on the stream. Um, I, I really want to see. I don't know if you have any of the other ones. I really want to see how much physically smaller the minis are. Um, very tempting, aren't they? They, they always makes me think of, was it the, the, iPod, the iPod Shuffle? Was that the one that had the little small screen? Always makes me think of those and how cool those were. All right, we got those installed. So Cask is installed here. Let's go through, uh, let's do some other ones here. Let's see. Well, I'm definitely gonna, gonna uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna do a Cask install of Google Chrome. A lot of this is gonna be for, like I say, kind of webby based tools. Uh, so, by the way, loving the Safari again, now that I can go back to it with the decent tabs. Let's not start that argument again, right? Uh, we're going to do Google Chrome here. Not going to do Dropbox, uh, not at the moment anyway. Oh, iTerm 2, of course. Uh, let's see. Don't need Sherlock on this one. Uh, let's go ahead and do Visual Studio Code. Oh, and a weird one here, maybe. Quick look, JSON. I do like to be able to quick look JSON files. Uh, oh, and uh, I think it's QL Markdown is the other one. Do I still have to do the, my script is so out of date here. I may not even have to do cask anymore, do I? Oh, oh that's weird, the delete key doesn't work. <coughs> there we go. Loving that they kept the option for the good new tabs. Yeah, I actually approved. I, I'm glad that they did both. I am sure we won't get a choice in the end. I will, you know, maybe I'll try and get used to the new tabs. I don't know. We still sort of have them on the iPhone, right? With the URL at the bottom, I think. Brew install dash dash casting. Oh, okay. Oh, I wonder if, hang on then. 
I wonder if I should do I'll do it that way. Let's do that. Thank you. God, I've got a I have got to install. Let's try that. Dash dash cask. Nope. All right. Uh, I have got to update my script. Boy. Certainly not going to run this the script in the current form on the new machine. All right, let's do it this way. We'll see what happens. My script is so out of date. Thank you to everybody, by the way, who's been watching the videos that I put out showing how to install uh, the Swift toolchain on Linux and then Vapor on Linux a couple of days ago. Appreciate that. You can go to uh, peterwilliam.com and find them on those on there. Haven't updated all of them yet on compileswift.com. I got to get to enter those posts. All right. While those are doing that, I gotta, I gotta find my favorite. I gotta, I gotta find a new favorite programming font tool. I found if you have not subscribed, I put a in the Compile Swift newsletter this week. CompileSwift.com forward slash newsletter, if I remember rightly. I put a tool in there, a great tool. I have to find it to show you where you can actually compare all of the different fancy programming fonts in a tool online to find the one you want. It's awesome. I'm hoping that the update parallels can figure out how to let me configure this uh, this VM here for in parallels for the for the Mac OS. That would be great if you if they can figure that out. I love to use VMs as my experimental. Try it here. If it fails miserably, or I screw it up, trash the VM and start over. A lot easier, a lot faster than doing it with your main you know, install of your OS on your machine. A lot safer too. All right, that's those. I do have some fonts here. A um, couple of trusty fonts that I, I like to use. So we're going to do brew, uh, tap, homebrew, slash cask, dash fonts. And then let's see, do we have, yep, we got the, so there's, there's two that I use. Um, I always install, I should say, uh, brew install font. I do like the JetBrains mono and I do like the source code pro. I use those. And I haven't got, oh. Okay, yeah, I think I had this last time. Brew install SVN. People still use SVN? I know a lot of people like it. I'm going to get some hate for that, I'm sure. All right, then I'm going to do Ruby and all the Ruby gems and yada, yada, yada. Uh, codingfont.com was that the one? Let me have a look. That might be it. Can't remember. I think this is it. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, great tool. Great fun to play around with all these fonts. The problem with that is you go down a total rabbit hole. You will spend hours on there trying to find like, oh, I don't know, this one, this one, this one. If you've got a favorite programming font, everybody, put it in the chat room. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe. I 
I do have pot issues with some of those ones that replace some of the ligatures and stuff like that, but you know. All right, there we go. Okay, that's those. Now, before I install, I'm gonna find my notes here, hold on. I gotta check this out. Um, I'm sure the way that I used to do Ruby is probably out of date, right? Boy, network's running a little slow here. Okay, there we go. No, I do. Do people still use that? Hey, uh, is it Lucas? Is that how you pronounce it? How you doing? Hello there. Coco type here says, uh, "Well, that's why it has tournament mode. You just do a bracket to find your favorite one." True. I think I got your favorite one when I ran it. JetBrains Mono. Yeah, usual fire code. Oh yeah, I looked at that one too. Yeah, I just really like the JetBrains one. We got uh, Lucas over here in the in the chat on YouTube. How you doing? What you up to? Oh, oh, come on! Does anyone use these? Does anyone have a preference? Do they still do it via these third-party tools? I think RBN is the lot one that I used last time. I should probably just check and see which one is. <coughs> Anyone know which one ships with Monterey? Okay, two six eight P two o five. That's got to be old, right? Uh, installing RBN includes Ruby builds. So now you're ready to install some other Ruby versions. RBN install. All right, we're going to do it that way. Wait, what's this? As do VM. All right, I'll buy it. Hang on. Why not just randomly type this in? ASPF-VM-COM Is that even a thing? It is a thing, I take it back. Oh, this is interesting. What is this? Tell us more, Coco Type, you like this? But for all kinds of tools, and oh, oh, really? Tool version manager, uh, look, oh, okay, Lucas says, you pronounced it perfectly, I did, thank you, awesome. <laughs> you found my channel today, it's great. I find it very strange that most of the Swift YouTube channels are yet so small. Thank you, well, you just made it one bigger. So there you go, how awesome is that? Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, um, it is strange, right? Because there's masses of awesome Swift content out there by so many good people. You should definitely check out Coco Type's stream on um, Twitch as well. He's awesome. 
He won't mind me saying that. <laughs> Appreciate you finding it. Hope it's helpful. If you've got any questions or anything or all that, just reach out. Let me know. Happy to try and answer them. Always willing to try and help. That's the whole point of this. Appreciate it. Just if, feel free to spread the word. Thank you. All right, so let's have a look. Once you once you set up your core shell configuration, plugins are installed to manage particular tools. And tools like NVM and, and uh, written the shell script. So what you're saying, Coco Type, is that I should have used this tool at the beginning, but you didn't want to tell me, right? So you can manage Ruby, Node. Oh, Node's a big one, right? JDK, yep, another big one, all from one thing. All right. So maybe I go backwards here. Let's 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 do this. Let's let's. I'm I'm gonna dive in on the deep end here. And try it. Even though I'm already one tool in, but okay. I do like the idea of managing all these because it is a pain. Ruby is not so bad, but but Node. Oh geez, what a pain, right? I mean, how often does that get updated? Homebrew. Um, I I still, you know, homebrew is my thing. Don't know what Nix OS is. That's a new one on me. All right, I'm 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 gonna give this a go. Homebrew dependencies will be automatically installed by Homebrew. Fantastic. Uh, Coco Type says. Um, NixOS is the best one if you have infinite time to fiddle with things. We developers, we have infinite time. <laughs> we certainly infinitely fiddle with things. I don't know about infinite time. <laughs> Every ad developers out there is going, uh huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. We're going to dive right in. This is why, again, I love using VMs for this kind of stuff. If it goes horribly wrong, not only can I delete it, but I can blame Coco type this time. He won't mind. I trust him because I've seen his streams. He's very, very smart. This could be awesome. You may have just completely changed the way I think about it, setting up my stuff here. So thank you. You know, funny story. I, earlier on, I was playing with Docker. I was trying to find a way to offload as much stuff as I could into Docker images and things like that. It's very disappointing that you still uh, cannot offload, um, you know, stuff like Xcode and stuff into, you have to run it on your local machine. Because what I wanted to do was do re have a Docker image for uh, React Native, which you can do with Android and everything else, but you have to sort of ping pong around a bit between that and your local Mac to do it on iOS still a bit of a pain. Uh, Lucas says hey, doing a task that can take three seconds. Nah, let's uh, make it in the next 10 hours. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like I may only do this twice in my life, but if I can write a script for it. <laughs> uh, Coco type says I got into as as do via Robin. So it's ultimately his fault. I don't know who Robin is, but we can we can thank him. I know what's going to happen. He's going, you don't know Robin? I probably probably know him by another name. All right. Restart your terminal. Uh, da -da 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 -da. To use, add the following on to your Z shell. Restart your terminal for the settings to take effect. Wait, I'm going to add this whole thing right here. All right. Do I not have a? Oh, maybe I haven't created one. Oh, I haven't installed oh my Z shell yet. I gotta do that as well. See, all these things. All these things I can't type. I 
I can't even see the corner of my screen because my cam my, my light is covering it up. So I hope I typed that in correctly. By the way, is that font big enough for you all in the window? Let me know. Okay, worked, so it must have been good. All right. Many different combinations of shells, da, 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 which affect the configuration here. Oh, now I now I read it. All right. Oh wait, I think I already did that. Okay, install a plugin. We'll install Node.js, perfect example via the, okay. I'll randomly tap on that, Coconut. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, didn't even think about that, yeah. Yeah. All right, awesome. By the way, I'm gonna throw the completely random. I'm using my iPad, uh, you know, with the sidecar. If anyone knows in, in when you're using sidecar, how to get rid of the really annoying toolbars to the left and to the bottom. And if you've ever used it, you know what I'm talking about. If you know how to get rid of them, please let me know because it's driving me nuts. Um, okay. We're gonna start with Node. I do need Node, so this is all rather convenient. I gotta do this first. I totally like this rabbit hole I've gone down, by the way. It's perfectly visible. Thank you, appreciate it, Lucas. Not everyone has a 60 foot screen like I got in front of me. Just feels like that. <laughs> You wait next week. I'm gonna be up when I get my little 14 inch screen. I'm gonna be like an old man, like oh, I can't see nothing. <laughs> In the sidecar menu, Lucas, you 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 may be my hero here. Sidecar menu is that? Uh, where is? Where do I find that? Preferences. Oh, okay. I'm totally gonna to go there right now. Where's my cursor? Hang on. System preferences. You can turn the sidecar toolbar. Oh, Lucas, thank you. You're my, you're my hero. It was destiny that sent you to me today because this has been driving me nuts. Where is the side? I didn't even know there was. Okay, sidecar. I think I got this wrong. Hang on, it's in the uh, sidecar menu from preferences. You can also turn this. Okay. Type in spotlight sidecar. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Of course, I've turned off my. I'm using Alfred because you know I'm an idiot. Hang on. You know that moment you click something and you hear all of your external drives start to spin up and you see the little spinner? That's what's happening. <coughs> okay, let me try it again. Ah, uh, sidecar. No. This is on Monterey. Let 
No, don't have it. Hang on one second. Totally not seeing it. Let me try again. Stupid question, is this the preferences on the Mac or the preferences on the iPad? I'm using the team, you should be able to get there from it. By the way, have you, you bought the new 14 inch Mac? Yes, I did. Yeah, I ordered the 14 inch um, Mac with the, uh, what do they call it? The Pro Max chip whatever you know that one with 32 gig of ram and a terabyte drive but not the highest um you know not the highest amount of cores you can get what is that 24 something like that no i got the next one down which maybe is the 24 because i just figured that was more than enough for me all right i will i will look these preferences up i don't want to keep you, you don't want to see me doing this all the time, so I will I will find it. In Big Sur, next to displays and preference. Let me have a look. I'm probably just completely missing it. Oh, it's not there. No? Hang on. You know what? It occurs to me. Let's, let's look on this one, right? No? Yeah. I'm open to suggestions. Thank you, Lucas, though I will look it up. It's You've given me hope that they can be removed. So I'm, I'm going to see if I can find those. All right, where did I get here? So we got the plugin installed. Oh no, I got to do, right. Oops. Uh, Coco type says, uh, hey, but it's 120 hertz, so at least it'll be super fast right in front of your face. <laughs> True. Uh, can confirm it appears on my machine running Big Sur. What did I do? Maybe because I've got it running? That'd be weird, right? Maybe I'm just special. Do you think I'm special? I don't think I'm special. Uh, next, to, I, I will look next to the display. I, what I'll do is, all right, I'm going to take my life in my hands here. I'm going to turn it off sidecar in a second and we'll see. Let me start this plugin installing. Oh, didn't think it would be <laughs> that fast. <laughs> okay, hang on. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go to my system preferences. I'm going to, I'm going to actually turn off, um, sidecar here let's see what happens all right it's turned off no nope. i'm still not seeing it how special am i All right, let me try it. Let me go back to it again. I'm going to turn it on. There it is. Let me look at the display settings. Oh, found it. Found it, guys. Okay, let me, uh, hang on. <laughs> wow, I found a whole bunch of optional stuff. Hang on, let me show you. How exciting is this? I found a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, don't worry, I found it. Uh, okay, breaking news. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do it on, I can't remember which machine, let me see if I can do it on this one so you can see it. Okay, system preferences, displays. Of course it's not gonna show up there, is it? Hang on, let me show you my, my machine here, the local machine. Take me one second here. I gotta change my sources.
Okay, now life's gonna get really confusing for you. This is my local machine, right? This, this preferences window here, go to displays, look for, there it is. By the way, don't you love the little, little uh, telling you the names above them? Super useful, right? Click on it, go to display settings, go down to the iPad, here they are. I can also, um, it does stop it and start it again. Well done, awesome. Good job, everybody. Yay to go, way to go, Lucas. All right, so you go to display settings here. Let me look at these other ones. So I've turned them off. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> uh, double tap for Apple Pencil, that's interesting. You can also use it as a mirror, main display and extended display, but you don't get those. So I didn't even look in there. Awesome, good job, everybody. Thank you, perfect. Hopefully you saw all that and I didn't mess up the screen. Uh, there we go. Can confirm it. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, the new display is love. Yeah, that iPad display. I can't. I'll be honest. I think I even mentioned this last time. Um, because I got the the M1 iPad, that display. Oh my gosh. So uh, that was part of the reason too why I was like, all right, I love my M1 Mac Mini, but I got to have that display on my my laptop now because when you go to anything else that's not that iPad display it just doesn't look as good all right fantastic awesome back to what we were doing so I've got the plugin installed uh, but uh, this placement of sidecar menu is garbage <laughs> yeah it's like well done you found it here's your reward you can turn it off <laughs> I know right Everybody, don't don't ever forget where that is. We'll all just have to remember to remind each other. All right, so we've got the no plugin here. Let's have a look. So, let's try this. So, in theory, it should tell me, it should tell me what there aren't any installed right now. So those must be the latest ones. We'll just install the latest version. Of course we will. All right. Well, this is nice and simple, Coco. I like this. This is nice and simple. All right, install the latest one. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how happy I am. Those bloody menus have gone away. <laughs> oh, that has made my weekend. All right, so now we've got that. So what I'm curious about, okay. So, uh, Now, here's the thing then. So if that's a Node.js one. Uh, okay. Guide complete. Well, that, 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 that made it easy. Let's look at the plugins. Oh, the Ruby one. That was it. Thank you, Coco. Thank you, Robin. All right. Next up, Ruby. Boy, I'm really going to have to update my script. So is it, I'm going to going to take a stab here and say Ruby latest. I'm in a detached head state. Maybe, I, maybe that's not the way you do it. Oh wait, it can install a default set of gems as well. <gasps> 
I misspelled latest. Lastest. <laughs> well, let's just do the lastest first. <sighs> Thank you. Good, you found it. I was hoping you someone would spot it. I was like, if I do this, I wonder how long it'll take. Install the lastest version. <laughs> uh, can I automatically install a set of default gems right after installing a Ruby version? To enable this feature, provide home default gems file that lists one gem. Oh, that's cool. Because who doesn't install Bundler, right? It's awesome. That is so cool. All right. Now we got to look at the rest of this list. Well, maybe that is the list. All right. Oops. All right, awesome. I'm going to dive into this a bit more in the future. Oh, I think my sidecar bombed. Did I find my first Monterey bug? I think I did. I found a bug. Most last. <laughs> I stole the most last version. <laughs> if not, not. <sighs> See, gotta have some fun, right? We should just make an alias, right? You know, the the lastest and the and the most last. <laughs> That, that should be what you, you know what? So tempting to put that in some documentation somewhere. Make sure you install the most last version. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <sighs> okay, that this is cool. I like this. All right. Uh, let's get this out the way. So we so the resolution of this screen, by the way, the default resolution in this VM uh, on parallels is I think it's let me look here. It was like fourteen hundred by something tiny. Do you remember those resolutions, the good old days? Uh, the default fourteen fourteen forty by nine hundred. You can't set it to another one at the moment, but God, it's tiny. All right, so let's see. I got to do my Ruby gems. I got to do Bundler, Firewatch, Cocoa Pods, um, and I use Color LS as well. And then I think that is mostly the end of my script, except for some settings that I I put in. Um, I can't even copy and paste between the the clipboards at the moment. Otherwise, I just would do that. <laughs> All right, cool. So, so far, this has worked great. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm not going to miss Xcode because I have Xcode on my uh, main OS anyway, so that's fine. This will give me a nice way to experiment with stuff like this uh, as if and uh, play around with that so this is awesome so appreciate all the help from all of you lucas i cannot tell you how much i appreciate you telling me how to get rid of those bars oh my god 
and the fact that we now found them, we know where they are. You know what? This would be a good ben benchmarking thing now that I think about it on the new laptop, seeing how long it takes to build Ruby, right? I've, I've seen a whole bunch of benchmarks all over the place, but everything is always showing at least double. The By the way, the performance of the new, the benchmarking of the video in the uh, Pro Max, they're saying it's comparable to an NVIDIA 3070, which is quite something. I worry, still worry about the heat though. People have been saying about, oh, I'm going to, try games and that on it under a wine or some windows emulator i don't know i still worry about the heat on things like that and and i did read by the way folks uh in case you're wondering people said that you know the 14 like the, the new laptops they do get hot still underneath um people say about them not getting as hot but they still get like hot so maybe we're not completely there Notably under pressure though, right? So, you know, when you're doing an Xcode build, something like that, I mean, that's to be expected, right? Okay, let's do some gem installs here. Let's let's install the most last. Okay. Um, gem install. Gonna do bundler. Fire watcher, Coco, well, I'm gonna leave Cocoa Pods off since I don't have Xcode for now. Um, color LS because I gotta configure all that at some point. All right, really, still gonna see through this stuff. See who it is. Consider adding one of the following versions in your config file. Right. What? Oh, did. Do I have to, oops, Lucas, uh, we'll see, I suppose I will buy my 14 inch start of next year, or maybe my workplace will give me, go for the, yeah, yeah, um, I, originally I was toying with, like, oh, shall I wait for other people to get, and then I was like, no, because I already know there's so many good things about it that I want to take advantage of, um, is this still going to fail, yeah. Uh, so many good things I want to take advantage of and I can't wait for my workplace to get me one because it'll take too long and I, I use one personally anyway so you know uh, my my sort of main day machine is the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar um, which is fine you know as with all things development whatever speed you have on your machine it's never enough right so um, it's a good excuse, start Xcode builds, walk away, right? When it's doing the archive processing, it's time to go to lunch. Uh, consider adding one of the following versions in your config file. Uh, we'll be, uh, okay, but what config file? Well, it did something. Or maybe it didn't. I don't recall having to build a Ruby config file before. Did I miss something? Oh, uh, did I miss? Uh, what did I miss here? I've not had to build one before. Uh, mind, yeah, yeah, Lucas says, yeah, mind you, right now, 2019, 15 inch, yeah. Uh, with only 16 gig of RAM, and it makes me snap sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, mine has 16 gig, and it does push it, yeah. Um, on this M1, by the way, this M1 Mac Mini, which is what I'm on right now, I think I mentioned this before once, maybe twice, Coco type will remember this. One of them was on the stream. 
um i hit the hit the max on the memory and ooh, it hurt but with the new one with 32 even with all my photography stuff and those huge files and everything else i'll be honest i figure that's enough for me i don't feel like i need to go crazy and have 64 yes it would be great but i i mean there's a point at which you can always stack it up with more but I think you have to be realistic and say, what do I feel like I need, right? If I can get by with 16, I've just doubled it to 32. My life's got to be good for a while. Right. Uh, Coco Type says, uh, sorry, I had to step away for a bit. Everything's still in one piece. Yeah, so far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says, oh, you need to set your as to global version, something like, oh, okay. I'm looking for a, here I am looking for a Ruby configuration file. Okay. Um, that makes more sense. Did I? No, I, that, that, Peter, no. <laughs> uh, I should have read the instru instructions, right? Okay, you know what? For once in my life, I'm going to do this right and read the instructions. I want to make you proud, everybody. want to make you proud. Just run that command. Uh, run which command? Oh, you mean literally, do you mean literally like, okay, thank you, sir. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Okay, let's go back up. Thank you, Coco Type. See, you're all so awesome. If I could just bring you all with me during the week when all my shit goes wrong during the day job, you could just fix it all for me. That'd be great. Can't pay you for it. Sorry. Okay, that is all of that. I think, let me go to my list. So I do have some settings that I... I don't want to have to type this in. Oh my goodness. Um, all right, just on the off chance this works so I don't have to type it in because I can't type all that in. Come on, please say that I did the right thing and made it public. I did. Thank goodness. Yay for forward planning. Okay, let's get rid of this one over here. All right, here's my install script, by the way, everybody. If you want to just completely laugh at it because it's way out of date. Uh, yeah, this is what I've been working from. Okay, here's, here's what I want. These defaults here. Because I like a really fast typing rate. Oh, uh, whoops. Typing rate. Show me the file names, extensions, yep, thank you. And then enable double to, yeah, enable the, the enable tap to click. I can't even say it. This is the script I gotta, I gotta update big time. We're done, mm, maybe. Well, we're done for at least most of the basic stuff, so that's good. And it only took about an hour, which is a lot less than it normally would. And I learned a bunch of new stuff along the way. How awesome is that? All right, let me take a drink here. Celebrate. Yay. I need to bring Safari back up on my local machine here. Because I don't need that window, but I do need this one. There we go. Okay, let's see. What else have I missed? Um, from here, so here's my, my uh, what I'm going to try and do better. I'm going to try and keep all of my uh, NPM packages and things like that. Instead of having them global, I'm going to try and keep them local to the projects this time. 
I usually would install globally things like um, Gatsby JS that I use for CompileSwift.com and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that. I'm trying to keep as much crap off my machine as I can this time. Uh, well, at least at the beginning, right? But this worked out good. So I think, well, let's see here. Um, I'm curious. Let's go up to System Preferences. Oh, actually, no. Let's just run the disk utility. I want to see how much space is left on this partition that it just created for. Yeah, see, um, it creates a 62 gig partition by default, which, again, remember, this is under a parallels VM. So it's a very small fraction of my terabyte, right? Or two, no, one terabyte drive. The problem with that is going to be that is not going to be, a, you know, that's that's not enough for Xcode and that kind of stuff, right? We all know how that goes. So uh, I've got 38 gig available still. Well, it's not enough from Xcode from the store. I don't know if it's enough for Xcode from the developer portal. Probably not, right? Uh, maybe I'll try that. Don't want to do that on the stream, though, because trying to pull that down is going to kill my bandwidth on the stream. I, you know what, two major takeaways today that are awesome, thank you to all of you for this, is, the, you know, again, the sidecar bars, this new, uh, as diff, gotta, gotta play with this, that, that's awesome. I love not having separate tools for things. Um, I did install Visual Studio Code, I, I should have quit that. That's the reason. I do, uh, let's see, the, should be on here yeah visual studio code actually i need to set that up so let's do that yeah yeah just open it oh my gosh i just remembered so when i do my new machine setup because i'm not going to do it from i'm not going to copy over my stuff from the mac mini i'm going to do a fresh one that's going to be a nightmare because it's going to ask me so many times to add all those security permissions, right? So, well, this is not good. Uh, hmm? It's just me or is that interface a bit wonky? Kind of a little bit worried about that. That's going to make life very difficult for what in the world? That's probably just got something to do with this VM of that, I'm certain. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, this, that, horrible. That's going to be a problem. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, Please, item, don't, don't bomb on me. Okay. Whew. Please. Okay, that's good. All right. Whew, I'll configure that sometime. All right, what do you think, folks? Anything else that I should do here to set this up, see if it works? I mean, that's, that's looking pretty good, mostly. Should have installed Chrome. Yeah, it did. I like to use Brave. I'll probably put Brave on here because I do like Brave. Um, but I think that's it for my basic, very basic tool set. Uh, let's see. I know, again, not necessarily going to install it in the VM here. But, you know, Nova is one that I use for my for my tools as well. So use all that stuff. But I think, fingers crossed, we got at least got all the basic stuff working. And what's nice is it's pretty responsive, right? I mean, it's running probably with most of the CPUs. I wonder what it says about that. So it's running with four gig of RAM. Okay. 
virtual display, like we said. And four cores. Okay, so it's not dreadfully configured. It just would be nice if I could tweak that in the parallel settings like we're used to for all the others. All right, awesome. Well, I'm satisfied with this. I'm gonna shut this machine down here for now. I think we're done here for the folks for this one. I wanna thank you all for your help and suggestions. Really appreciate it. Uh, running that smooth with only four gig of RAM? I know, right? Must be just because it's awesome. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it says four gig of RAM, I gotta believe it. So that that's really what I wanted to get done here in this one. Um, today just to play around get that set up uh just so you know let me let me share this here if i can find the right thing these are my other vms that i normally use right i got a windows 10 one a windows 11 preview and a couple of ubuntu ones as well so i i do use some of that stuff for messing around with um well yeah there you go okay so that's uh, that's what I got going on here. I do love Parallels for Mac. I've been using it for years and years and years. Um, great performance. Super excited to see what I can do with the 32 gig of RAM and, and all that stuff. All right, there we go. Well, thank you everyone for hanging out. Um, I think this has been very cool today. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you hanging out in the chat and everything else. Uh, we're gonna do some more fun stuff next time. We'll get back to, to some swift development and stuff like that i got some projects on the go i'm sure I'll share with you all as i'm working on them maybe even don't want to go there just yet but uh, i'm also looking at working on a watch app with somebody and some gps stuff involved there so that's a new bit of fun for me on that have a great halloween stay spooky stay swifty and I will see you in the next one. If you want to reach out to me, by the way, you can find me either at peterwidham.com or compileswift.com and compile swift on all the social networks. I'd love to uh, reach out, talk with you all. Again, appreciate all your help. Have an awesome weekend. Uh, Cocos, I will be looking out for Coco Types Halloween stream, whether it's today or tomorrow. Hope you feel better, buddy. With that, have a good one. I will see you all very soon indeed. See you later.